Hey folks, Sean McCormick here. Welcome to the channel. This is going to be a super quick one. I, I, I could be doing all the polished set stuff in the background. Couldn't be bothered right now. But what I am going to do is, I don't know if you've been watching my Instagram at all. So I'm on Instagram as Lightroom Blog now as well. That account took okay just to get started. So I was out doing a recce locally, uh, looking for some wild garlic. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do an edit of one of them. And that's it. Just, just, I'm not showing anything. I'm just doing an edit. That's it. Uh, so it will help if I have Lightroom up and ready to go on the screen. And so, yeah, let's go in and dive in and do an edit. So what I've already done here is these were all shot as HDR images. And uh, so I would have shot them with, let me just actually go here. And if I just go S, that will open them up. So we can see here you've got the base exposure, a lighter exposure and a darker exposure. Now, I should in camera swap this so that way it goes from dark, medium, light, because it's just more obvious. Uh, so I'm just going to grab one of the images here. If you want, what we can do is we can have a quick look just through the thumbnails of me walking through it. I was basically waiting on the sun, but the sun wasn't always there. Just, it was going behind clouds. So there's a few like this, but there's nothing. But as soon as the sun is there, the, the same areas look way, way better. But just the dapple light is much better. Anyway, so I've decided that I'm going to edit this one here in particular. Um, so let me get rid of the toolbar here altogether so we can see as much as possible. So what do I want to do? Well, I want to make more of this. I'd like this to be hazier. I want to control this a little bit overexposed here. Um, I want to highlight the color and change the color. And I want to darken some edges, all of that kind of stuff. So I think we can do a lot with it. And um, so what's the very first thing that I would normally do? Well, D for develop, make sure we're in develop. And um, we don't need anything on that side. So this is fine here. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to pull highlights and they always do that. And we're going to do a little bit of work to resolve some of the issues with it because it is kind of a little bit blown out there, which is to be expected because we've got the sun pretty much in frame. And um, so we have a specular highlight, which is fine. So I'm going to open up the shadows, but not too much. I'm opening the shadows up because I'm thinking about what's happening in here. I'm not thinking about what's happening here because I'm actually going to get rid of that shortly. So what are we going to do with the colors? Well, I'd say what we could do is before we do anything else, we can jump into color mixer into point color. Grab some of our green. Kind of go for a medium tone green and then let's just go and make that say a warmer green. All right. So it's a bit yellower. OK, that's too much. So back a little bit here. So I like that. And that, that's keeping the feeling of warmth. Now, I've intentionally uh, not changed what's here. I could just warm this here as well. That will do it. Uh, but here I just wanted to use a little bit of point color. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into masks. So our first mask is going to be a radial gradient just around the sun itself. So I'm just really going to pull out and pull downwards. The reason why I'm pulling downwards when I'm near the top of the photo is I don't want to run into the top of the photo by accident, which can be annoying. So what are we going to do here? Well, I want this to be. How do I put it? I want this to be hazy, basically. And so what 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 do we use for haze? Well, we would use reverse dehaze, so negative dehaze. So we're going to bring that up. That's going to make it hazy. But it also brightens it way too much. So we've got to pull that down as well, but keep the haze there. And I think we should also add a bit of warmth because it is the sun after all. So let's warm it even more. And we're almost creating. Let me just pull it out this way. Make it a bit circular. We actually could be long in this case here. All right. And now we're going to do is I'm actually going to create an additional one here, another linear gradient. Same kind of spot, much larger. Again, pull down. I'm going to do a little bit of dehaze here, but not quite, not quite as much. Uh, and then drop the exposure a little bit. OK. And maybe just add a little bit of warmth to that as well. All right, so what have we done so far? Let's go use our backslash key. So that's quite significant now. So what it's done though as well is because we've done a little bit of that work to create the haze, it's also given us I, I, we do need some contrast, basically. So let's bring up the contrast here. And I think we could also possibly bring up the exposure a little bit as well. Now, I am concerned about this area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another mask here. I think a radial gradient will, will do kind of here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hold down the Option key uh, for a second or the Alt key. And that changes that to intersect. And I'm going to intersect that with a luminance range. And then I only want to have it working on the lightest 
parts of the images. And can we have a little bit of fall off on it as well, maybe? So that way it's not really, really bad. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down here to tone. And I'm going to try highlights initially. If that doesn't work, whites might work as well. OK, there we go. So I just want to pull down and get away from the extreme hotness that's in this. What I'm actually going to do is let me pull the highlights down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to compensate with the lack of uh, what's the look word I'm looking for? Contrast uh, by increasing the contrast again, which we can do more because we've a little bit more work that we can do with that, um, and even bring that those highlights down even more. And then when we go back and do our contrast, you see we're pushing the whites up again from the contrast. I'd even be tempted to come in now to a tone curve, just a, the standard tone curve, and just push that up a little bit there, and create our contrast there as well, just so we have a lot more control. All right, so there we go. So let's press that backslash key again. Huge difference there. OK, now the sky is kind of annoying a little bit, so I could use a radial or a linear gradient for that. But I think I'm actually going to come in and use another uh, radial gradient. So I'm just going to pull it for some more from the middle and pull it out. And I may change the feather on this significantly, but I'm going to invert this and pull the exposure down. So that's going to darken the edges. So that's going to bring our highlight in among what's happening here. Change the shape a little bit as well. Make it. Well, that's changing our feather, which is fine. OK, and again, our let's turn off the mask altogether for a second. Backslash. OK, I like what's going on there. And I love the fact that this haze actually is drawing your eye as well. It looked a bit weird earlier, but I think it looks pretty good there now. So. So yeah, I'm happy with that. And the other thing, if we want to do another pinch of color back in our color mixer, we could grab the eyedropper and grab one of these kind of brownie reds. Might be better to go for this kind of area here. And we could increase the range a little bit. And then we could do a little bit of saturation shift. And you see a huge, oh yeah, the hue shift a little bit towards more red is actually gives a little pops of color in the image. I'm liking that. And I think I'm going to do one more mask up the top which is that linear gradient. Pull it down here. I think we're going to pull exposure. I think if we pull uh, highlights, it'll look a bit weird. It'll look a bit gray. Yeah, it looks really weird. So let's not do the highlights. And let's make this even longer as well. And rotate it. Bit straighter. OK. And Turn off the masking just so that we're looking at without any bips on it. And again, Y. Oh, sorry, backslash. Let's press Y to bring them, put them up side by side. Yeah, so we got a lot more detail in there. There's a lovely little bit of haze. We got some pops of color that would draw our eye at the bottom. And then we have this leading line that's bringing us up towards the sun. So I think we got a natural kind of feel to that. It's, uh, I think, uh, uh, Aaron Babnick uses has one of these kind of composition things where like stuff is pointing up towards the focal point as well. Um, is that the arrow? I can't remember now. But yeah, that's that's uh, that should be it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So, folks, that's just a very quick edit and a little bit of thought process in how I'm doing the edit. That's that's really it. I really like what I've done there. I like the fact that we've added the warmth and the haze and that we've also controlled what's going on around the outside and our color as well. Now, one thing I didn't mention, which I'm just going to mention very quickly, is that this was done with the Provia uh, profile, and I could have changed that to Veldia, and it would have given me a much more contrasty look straight away. In fact, now that I've done it, I like it, except for one thing, I think it's just a little bit too much. So what I'll do is I'll just pull back that contrast, and now I'm much happier with that. Um, yeah, so that's great. I'm really, really happy with that. I, it, I hadn't really tried the profile before I did the edit, and I would normally use that profile or have it set in camera. So it's a good start. Uh, if you got a, it's basically, I know that that's probably because I'm on Fuji, but you just basically look for your vivid or your landscape profile and add that, and that will be a good start in terms of con uh, saturation and contrast. So it's always a really good start. Now, I would say that is just a sample of how I would be in just thinking through the edit as I'm doing it. I'm literally verbalized like what I'm doing and what's going on in my brain. I'm saying what I like and what I don't like. So it isn't a, a, like an introduction to the tools themselves. But if you do want that, what you can do is you can have a look at my book, Essential Development 3. 
So that's 25 tips for Lightroom's Develop module, and it is up to date. So it's covered pretty much everything in it. So point color, which is new, is, is in there among other things. And you see all of the masking and all that kind of as well, including advanced masking. So do give that a look. Have a, have a consider getting that. Uh, if you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell if you want to get notified of when I do new videos because obviously I haven't done as many recently, but I am aiming to get more done. Now I am doing the Lightroom Summit coming up, uh, which of course is only like three weeks away at this stage and you're going to see this in more than three weeks and that will be over, but I'm just letting you know that it's on. So folks, thanks for watching the video and I will see you in the next one.